If your fruit trees are struggling, it might be because they've been pruned improperly or maybe they've never been pruned. Hi, I'm Farmer Rishi, and in today's lesson of the Never Ending Gardening course, I'm gonna be talking to you about winter fruit tree pruning. For those trees of yours that go dormant during the winter, it's an essential process for you to prune those trees for their health. And this includes trees such as apricots, plums, like the one behind me, figs, mulberries, persimmons, jujubes, apples, pears, and more. So if you have any of those trees in your garden, this is a lesson you're gonna to wanna to watch. For my pruning tasks today, I have my three pruning tools with me and these will pretty much get me through any type of cut that I need to make. For smaller branches, up to about three quarters of an inch, I have my hand pruner. For anything larger than that, about one to two inches, I have my lopper. And for any really large cuts, say up to six inches, I have my pruning saw. And if you wanna learn more about these tools, watch our video, Tools in the Garden, where I talk about these specific tools which ones I prefer, and also where to buy them. There are two different types of cuts that we're gonna use when we're pruning. One is called a heading cut, the other is called a thinning cut. I'm gonna show you both of those. A heading cut is when we remove the head, the tip of a branch, and we cut a little bit further back. This will cause bushier growth. A thinning cut is when we remove an entire branch, and what that's gonna do is redirect the energy that was going into that branch to the other branches in the tree. It's helpful to think of the energy flow in a tree like a river that's flowing upwards. And as you cut one branch off, you're redirecting the flow that was going there to somewhere else. Or if you head a branch off, that energy that was flowing into that branch is then going to split and create new tributaries coming off, forming new branches. So let's start with a heading cut. This branch here is coming from the base of this larger branch and coming out here. If I do nothing, then all of that energy is gonna to go towards the tip of this branch and it's gonna to continue to grow kind of straight this way. But that might mean it's coming into my pathway. That might mean it's, you know, so it's low and it's gonna hit me in the head while I walk by it. And so I wanna prune that branch back and maybe create some bushier growth. So if I do a heading cut, again, removing the head of this branch, cutting anywhere back along that branch, that is gonna create bushiness. What's gonna happen now is actually you can see the sap dripping out of that cut that I just made. So that energy flow, that sap flow is coming this way. It now has nowhere to go in this direction. So it's gonna come out of the closest points that it can find, which means I'm gonna get new buds, new branches, forming behind that cut. So there's a bud here, that's gonna now start growing this way. There's a bud back here, that's gonna now start growing this way. And there's a bud here, that's gonna now start growing this way. Depending on how much energy was flowing into that branch, uh, that's gonna determine how many buds are gonna break and how many new branches are gonna form from my heading cut. A thinning cut, like I mentioned, is when we're removing a branch and we're completely redirecting the energy flow that was going into that branch to another branch. So for example, right here, I have this branch coming over and kind of crossing over here. It's not a very well positioned branch. And so I wanna remove this completely. Now, where is that energy gonna flow after I cut it? The energy is coming up this larger branch, splitting here, some of the energy coming to this larger branch, some of this energy coming to the smaller branch that I wanna remove. So when I remove this, all of the energy that would have come into this small branch is gonna to continue to flow into this larger branch, which means that the tips of the end, on the ends of this larger branch are gonna get more energy, they're gonna grow faster. So let's make this thinning cut. So I'm gonna make a few more cuts and just tell you whether they're thinning cuts or heading cuts to help you just get the idea here. So this whole branch here is kind of in an awkward position right in my face. I'm gonna remove this whole thing. So because I'm removing the whole branch, this is a thinning cut. 
the energy that would have flown into this branch is now going to flow along that thicker branch and towards the tips that are on that branch. If I'm looking up here at this set of branches, I'm going to make a few, again, thinning cuts, removing the entire branch. That's a thinning cut. That's a thinning cut. This is also a thinning cut. But I want to now make this area a little bit bushier, so I have some fruit right here that I can reach. So I'm going to do a heading cut right here. That's a heading cut. And now these nodes behind that heading cut are going to create bushiness. They're going to create additional branches and structures where there's going to be fruit for me to pick. When we're doing a thinning cut, meaning we're cutting the, a whole branch off, it's important not to cut too far on the branch. So there's something called a branch collar. When you see, anytime you see a branch coming out of a larger branch, like right here, there's a little collar that forms a, around the base of the smaller branch, right? There's that collar right around there. That collar is part of this bigger branch. And so if you cut through that collar, you're not cutting the thinner branch that you're trying to thin back you're cutting into the bigger branch here. So when we're doing a thinning cut, we want to cut right in front of that collar. We don't want to cut through the collar. I'm going to show you an example of what not to do as well. So looking at this branch, if I wanted to thin off this branch, what I shouldn't do is cut way back here behind the branch collar. Now what I've done is I've cut into the branch that that little branch was coming off of and I've damaged this bigger branch and now this wound is going to have a hard time healing because you actually the cut off the healing mechanism the branch collar is the healing mechanism if you cut that off this wound will have a really hard time healing so again let me show you what you should do on this lower branch branch collar is right here I want to cut right in front of that lower branch, there should be a little nub coming off. After we've planted a tree, it's really important that we do some initial pruning to create the structure of the tree. What is the tree's shape going to be long term? That's called structural pruning, and you want to do that almost as soon as you plant the tree. Last year, I planted this fig tree, and I never got around to doing any structural pruning, so I'm going to show you some basics on how to do that right now. This tree, as you can see, has essentially three trunks. One, two, three. So that's not something that I personally want out of this tree. I want to have a single trunk tree. I want to remove those two trunks so that I'm not wasting energy into growing those. And the second thing I want to do is keep my tree nice and short so that I can reach all of the fruit. We, for most of our fruit trees, we want to have a short branching structure so that all of the fruit is easily reachable. So we don't have to get up on a ladder or use a long fruit picker to grab the fruit. Uh, it's the easiest to just walk up and be able to grab all the fruit right here in this window. And so that's how I'm going to show you how to do the structural pruning of this tree. So first things first, let's remove these two trunks. Great. We've removed those other two trunks, and now we're left with just the one trunk that I wanted. Now, if I'm looking at what remains of the tree, I have these two branches down here, which are right in that window where I want to be able to pick the fruit. But my main trunk is coming kind of up and getting out of my window. It's, and especially these branches are going to continue to grow, and they're going to continue to grow further and further out of my window. So what I actually want to do is create more branching structure down here in that window, my, picking, my fruit picking window, and the way I'm going to do that is through a heading cut. I'm going to behead this trunk and force the tree to create new branches low down here where I can grab my fruit. And this is pretty much it for that initial structural pruning of this fig tree. I'm going to get some more branching right here. These branches are going to continue to grow and probably add some bushiness on their own. And I'm going to keep that fruiting window right here where I can reach all of the fruit. I'm going to show you one more tree that's one year past this step. So what this tree might look like next year 
to show you another example of how this structural pruning works. Here's a mulberry tree where I did the same process that I just showed you, but I did it last year. So you, now you can see one year on, what does that tree look like? So last year, this tree was a single trunk that just went straight up and I cut it off way down here low, kind of at my knee level, because I really wanted to create a short, bushy structure with this particular tree. When I cut that branch, that trunk, I did a heading cut on that trunk, that forced all these other branches to come up here, really nice and down low within my fruiting window, uh, within my fruit picking window. And so now I've had all these other branches come up and I did a little pruning of this tree already earlier, thinning it out, opening it up, and, and bringing some of the height down again so that again it's not getting too tall. I particularly want this one to be a little shorter. So here's an, just another example of how that structural pruning in the first couple years is going to lead to what does the tree look like long term. Here is a plum tree where we've done that structural pruning several years ago and we've created this big healthy plum tree with a lot of that fruit right here in my fruiting window. I don't have to reach too high to pick anything. This tree is topped off right at the, where my hand can reach. And now instead of doing structural pruning, we're generally doing just maintenance pruning. And in maintenance pruning, we're really just trying to keep the tree healthy, keep the fruit in that fruiting window so that we can grab all of it. Uh, and making sure that the tree just has a nice open airy structure where sunlight can reach all the tree, all the, leave, all the leaves are able to get some sunlight. When we're doing maintenance pruning, there's a couple things that we're trying to do. One, we're trying to maintain the height. So we're gonna keep pruning the height of this tree so that it's not growing beyond what we can reach. Two, we're trying to keep the tree open, airy, so sunlight can enter the canopy of the tree. That's really important for a couple different reasons. One, we're trying to maximize our photosynthesis. So we're not having leave, the tree is not having to support leaves that aren't getting sunlight. All the leaves are getting sunlight, harvesting energy for the tree. Two, we're trying to make sure that there's air continuously flowing through the canopy. When we have a really dense canopy, when a tree has not been pruned for many, many years, the branches inside the canopy continue to overlap and get denser and denser and denser. And that creates stagnation. That air act physically stagnates within the canopy of the tree. There's not movement of air through the tree. And so we get all types of fungal di diseases, mildews that will damage leaves. And that will also invite insects to come in because we're now in a, we have a, a diseased part of the tree so insects and other diseases can enter the tree uh, through those diseases. So we wanna create that open canopy, air is moving, and also sunlight is able to come in and disinfect the inside of the tree. We're also just trying to remove any diseased or damaged branches, any dried up branches. So, you know, sometimes the weight of the tree has just broke, the weight of the fruit on the tree has broken a branch. We wanna remove that so no insects can come in there. Any, if we see any sores or cankers or bleeding, we're gonna remove that from those branches from the tree so no diseases can enter. We're also looking to make sure that we're maintaining fruiting wood on our fruit trees. Fruiting wood is a little bit of a difficult concept to grasp, grasp but every fruit tree produces, wood on a, uh, produces fruit on a different type of wood. For example, here on this plum tree, a plum tree, tree fruits on last year's wood. Okay, the wood that the tree grew last year is what is going to set fruit this year on this tree. So if I'm looking at this tree, that youngest, most uh, uh, reddest growth on this plum tree, the red colored growth, that's the newest, freshest growth on a plum tree, that is what's gonna give me fruit in the upcoming season. If I look at the older branches, you know, the ones that have gotten thicker, they've gotten woodier, their color has changed, they're getting a little bit more gray even, those branches are not gonna produce fruit. 
What is also not going to produce fruit are the new branches that the tree grows in the upcoming season. So when the tree wakes up from dormancy, it's going to grow new branches. Those new branches are not going to have fruit on a plum tree. On a fig tree, fig trees fruit on new wood. That new growth that comes in the new season, the upcoming season, that's where you're going to see fruit on a fig tree, but not on a plum tree. So if I were to prune this tree too heavily and remove a lot of last year's growth, I would get very, very little fruit. So I want to make sure that I'm keeping some, a good amount of last year's growth so that I have fruit this year. And continuing to talk about fruit on our tree, we're also looking at the structure, how, how strong is the structure of our tree and is it able to hold the weight of fruit, okay? So any branch that's coming kind of sideways out, right, that's going to create a lever and fruit hanging on that sideways branch is going to cause that branch to lean over and possibly break. If a branch is too thin and it tries to set fruit, if it's thin and long and it tries to set fruit, then that branch will also break. So we are looking at the, on the fruiting wood, where the fruiting wood is, is the tree structurally strong enough to support the weight of that fruit? Last thing we're gonna look for are branches that are just facing in a direction that we don't want. So maybe it's just coming out too far into a pathway, it's at a height where you might run into it, uh, or if it's just growing downwards. You know, we generally don't want downward facing branches because again, when fruit sets on a downward facing branch or a sideways facing branch, that's gonna uh, cause that branch to sag and probably break. So let's go ahead and get started with the pruning here. What I'm gonna do is show you an example of each kind of branch that I would wanna cut off. And then I'll widen out and just show you my process of pruning the whole tree. I like to start with pruning for my openness and making sure that I don't have a lot of crisscrossing or uh, overlapping branches. Um, so I'm going to start just looking right here and immediately I can see that I have some crisscrossing. This branch here is overlapping with this branch here. So I know I want to remove one of those. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove this whole branch with a thinning cut. Okay. And now if I look up over here, even though these branches are not crisscrossing, some of them are overlapping. It feels a little bit too dense, uh, which means that you know this branch will be shading out this branch, and so this branch is not going to get any shade. So I'm going to then remove this branch here. When I'm doing this, I'm also removing kind of the taller branch, so I'm removing some of the height of the tree, and I've brought the height down a little bit lower into that fruit harvesting window that I like. I'm also going to remove this branch here, which is facing backward into the canopy. Uh, that's not really what I want. I usually want outward facing branches. And now I'm looking back here. I also see a downward facing branch that is also kind of crisscrossing. I'm going to remove that. Uh, I'm looking back over here. I just see a little bit of crowding through this branch here. I'm going to remove that. I don't do, I'm not sitting and like thinking too much about, oh, is, you know, which branch is the right one and which branch is the wrong one. I'm always just keeping the kind of the larger picture of uh, what do I want the overall shape of the tree to be and is it you know is it in my fruiting window let's take you know let's take it off or let's leave it so I see another one here right back here uh, crisscrossing with this branch and this is also getting too tall out of the window where I can har uh, harvest from it so I'm gonna remove this branch here let's try that again in this region so again, if I'm looking at this, uh, this section of the tree and imagining it's fully leafed out, I'm trying to see where are the leaves going to overlap, right? Where am I too crowded? Especially because when this tree sprouts, all of these branches are going to grow even more. So if they're crowded right now, they'll be even more crowded once they leaf out. So again, I'm looking and I see that this branch here is just right in between all of these other branches and it's really crowded. So I'm gonna remove this guy here. And just right here, these two are very closely close together. Don't need both of those. Let's remove that one. And if I'm looking, I see a broken branch here. I might as well remove that. 
Um, and also just right here, this branch is growing right into these other two. Again, when it sprouts in the spring, it's going to continue to grow that way, so I don't need that. And just like that, I feel a little bit more open, a little more spacious. Each branch has its own region that it's growing into, and they're feeling more comfortable. Like I mentioned earlier, we're also looking for dead wood within the tree, dried up branches that are no longer growing. And you can s notice those based on the, the texture, they'll feel much drier. They don't have that flexibility to them. They become very stiff once they're dead. The tip will be completely brown. Uh, and this is dead wood. If you leave this on here, some insects might come or termites might come to try to eat this up and they might introduce some disease as they work their way ba back to the growing tissue. So we want to remove this, and this one here is also dead. We'll remove that. Here's another example of a dead branch. This one clearly broke right back here, so we're going to remove that one. I just noticed this really long branch here that's crisscrossing over all of these other branches, so of course I'm going to remove that. And right in front of that branch was this broken one here, so I definitely want to remove that as well. I'm going to do a bit more cleanup on this tree, working specifically on crisscrossing branches uh, and looking for dead wood, diseased wood, downward facing branches. And then we're going to start to look at the actual fruiting wood and what kind of pruning, what kind of adjustment do we need to make to the tree so that our fruiting wood is in good shape. So I've done a lot of the crisscrossing branches, making sure that the tree is open, sunlight's able to enter the canopy. Now the next two things I'm going to look for are height and the length of my fruiting wood. So I really don't want that fruiting wood to be too thin and long where it can't support the weight of the tree. And so I'm doing this at the same time because a lot of the fruiting wood is toward the end, the top of the tree. So as I bring the height down, I'm also going to bring some of that fruiting wood down. Uh, and I'm also going to look on the edges of the tree to prune back some of that fruiting wood so it's not too long. Now we're looking at that fruiting wood on the branch, which is the wood, the newest wood, probably more of the thin wood from last year where the flowers and then the fruits are going to develop. So if I'm looking at this whole branch right here, all these thin, thin little branches that are on this larger branch are my fruiting wood and they're the ones that are going to set fruit. And so it's up to me to kind of imagine as I'm pruning how much fruit do I think that each of these branches can hold. And these really thin, thin branches, they probably cannot hold that much fruit. Maybe, maybe one, maybe two fruit. Um, so I want to leave just maybe three points where they can flower. Out of those three, I might get one or two fruits, which is what these branches can carry. So I actually want to go through, I'm looking at this whole set of branches right here, and I want to prune back all of that fruiting wood to the point where I feel like, okay, yes, that branch can support that weight of fruit. So I'm just going to go through here, I'm going to prune pretty much every single one of these pretty far back, uh, because I really just want them to be holding one, maybe two fruit if they're a little bit thicker. Here's another example right here. This is fruiting wood. And remember the one that the branch that it's coming off of that I cut last year, that's obviously not fruiting wood because that's from last year. So I want to just cut this year's fruiting wood back to the point where I feel like, hey, that little branch, okay, it can support just one or two little fruits. 
and and then also actually also looking at the overall branch here now can this overall branch how much fruit can that support well i might want to shorten that up a little bit too so that that also is not going to break so we're looking at both the little branches and the overall structure can that structure support the amount of fruit that might set on it so like i mentioned when we're looking at fruiting wood we're also looking at the height and i want to prune the height back just to the point where I can reach the fruit. So I'm looking at these three branches way up here and I'm thinking, hey, that's beyond what I can comfortably reach from the ground. So I definitely want to shorten those. I'm going to come in here. I'm actually going to shorten it a little bit below where I can reach because when it grows, it's going to grow from the point that I cut it back up. So if I cut it at the point that I can reach, those branches are going to grow beyond what I can reach. I'm going to cut a little bit lower. This guy here. And now when those grow back, they're well within my reach. Same thing over here. Again, reducing the height to the point just below where I can comfortably reach. So this is where I can reach. I'm going to go a little bit below and just matching the shape of that here. And here I'm noticing while I'm doing this, oh, actually this is a little bit crowded. These branches are overlapping a bit. So doing some openness, opening uh, and removing crisscrossing there too. All right, I'm getting towards the end here. Now I'm just gonna keep working on that height and pruning back those, that fruiting wood so that my tree is short, stubby, kind of strong and able to hold up all the fruit that it's gonna set uh, come summer. Okay, I'm done with my pruning for now. I think I did a pretty good job. As you can see, compared to when we started, the tree is lower and it's very open. Don't have a lot of crisscrossing branches. We removed all the dead branches. We removed all the horizontal branches. We moved the downward facing branches. And we've brought the fruiting wood back to a point where it can, it's not too long uh, for the thickness, the, branch is able to hold up the weight of uh, any fruit that might potentially form. Now you might have noticed on this pruning job I primarily used my hand pruner. I didn't really need my lopper and I didn't use my uh, saw at all and that's because we've been pruning these trees regularly. They get pruned every year and because of that I never have to do too much large pruning. I've done that in the past as I was creating the structure and so now I'm really just doing very uh, fine maintenance pruning and that can all be done with the hand pruner. Now what's gonna happen next is that in the spring, uh, about two months from when we're filming this, the flowers of this tree are all gonna come out and they'll get, then, then they will get pollinated and we'll start to have that fruit set. And you will see over the course of the summer how that fruit as it develops weighs on the tree. And you might need to do some additional pruning during that time if you see that oh i left that branch too long it's too thin it's got too much fruit on it you need to cut that cut the branch off to prevent it from breaking especially in the beginning when the tree is young you might get a lot of fruit set on a young branch and i've seen cases where that actually will break you know uh, uh, 
pretty large developing branch in half. So pay attention, make sure there's not too much weight coming on. You can also just pick fruit off as it develops if you see that starting to happen. Um, but for now, we're good. This is what we wanted to achieve, an open, strong, short structure where we can reach all of the fruit when it comes. Okay, well, I have a lot of pruning to do. We have a number of trees uh, here at the farm that need to be pruned, including this apricot right behind me. If you're watching this video in December or January, um, check our website for my annual in-person fruit tree pruning workshop here. Um, if you want to get some in-person practice and have me guide you through it, then you can join my workshop. Just check the date for the upcoming year. Also look out for our next lesson, which is going to use the branches that we pruned off of some of our trees to create new trees. This is called cutting propagation and something we do a lot here in our nursery to grow new trees. There are certain trees where you can actually take the branches, create roots on those branches, and then grow new trees. So that's coming up. Other than that, remember there's no garden too small, no soil too poor. This is the never-ending gardening course, and I'm Farmer Rishi. Thank <laughs> you.